Matt Lennon and Boxing Social in association with William Hill, Empire Fight Store. Delight to be joined by The Voice of Queensbury oh. and <laughs> Dev Sarney. Dev, look, it's been playful all week. It sort of, it turned a little bit in the head to head. Didn't want to look away. It's reaching that sort of boiling point now. It's a huge fight Saturday. How are you feeling coming into this? You must be you must be buzzing to watch this one. Uh, I am buzzing to watch it. And look, it, it has been playful. It has been friendly. But let's not forget that there has been a vicious warning that has been sent out from Zillow Zhang. He did say to him, chat, shh, get zanged. So has Joyce chat any, uh, any, you know, I don't know. I don't think he has. So if he hasn't, does that mean Zhang lets him off? So much, so, so much to think about. But look, you can see during the face off there, it, it did get quite intense and I loved it. I could have, from where I was, I could only see Zhang. Zhang would not take his eyes off him and it, the whole thing switched. He's been nice, he's been friendly to be around, he's going for Chinese with Big Johnny Fisher, he's doing all sorts of stuff, saying whatever we want him to say on camera, but that is a fighter in there through and through and he, he's a serious guy. What do you make of the weights? Obviously Joe Joyce looks stacked, looks in great condition, lighter than the previous fight I believe by a fair, a fair whack. Um, what do you do? You read much into that because I know heavyweights they don't have to make weight, but obviously they condition themselves to so maybe move around a little bit more. Does this suggest that he isn't going to maybe just go slugging it out with him and that he will move around a little bit? What? Because Zan can take a punch. We've seen it. I, I think so. He the weight that he came in at is around the same sort of weight, almost identical weight than what he came in uh, against Daniel Dubois, right? Which is around a stone lighter than what he was against Joe Parker. Now, we saw against Joe Parker, he just walked forward, essentially, and juggernauted him and just broke his heart, drowned him, took all of his best shots. Maybe there is a thinking that you can't necessarily walk forward and just take the Big Bang, certainly for the first few rounds. I would imagine the, the Big Bang dissipates a little bit uh, you know, as, as the fight goes on, but those first few rounds are going to be very dangerous. And I think you can tell from the shape of him, the abs are popping. This is like a, a you know, like an old Joe Joyce. It feels like he's going to box a little bit and, uh, and kind of break him down. Um, I think he needs to be clever in there. I think they all know he needs to be a little bit clever. You can't just walk forward against this guy. So his shape tends to tell me that. What does it say about Joe Joyce? Though? I think Lewis has caught up with him before, but as we've seen him now, the fight's getting closer. He's a fighter that's taking risks. He's, you know, WBO interim. He's mandatory for Tyson Fury. I mean, Alexander Usyk, sorry, apologies. So he's got that position, but instead of going in there with a guy who may be a bit tricky, but he knows they'll win against, he's rolling the dice constantly. Nobody, nobody's asking for Joseph Parker on, you know, to potentially give the position. No one's asking for Big Bang Zhang, who many believe beat Hergovic, but he is doing, and he's putting on, he's putting on some great, great performances for the fans. Yeah, well, look, as as fans, what more do you want? You've you've got this guy who is hilarious. Uh, just watch his, his interviews, his press, he's got that awkward funniness. He knocks everyone out, he takes everyone's best punches, he breaks their heart, he's from this country, he's an Olympic silver medalist, he ticks so many boxes, just get behind him because he is putting his heart and soul into this sport and he's doing it the hard way. He didn't win the gold, should have won the gold, so when you don't win the gold, you have to go a slightly harder route. You have to take harder fights, especially at his age, 37 years old. His resume is probably, there's probably only Anthony Joshua's resume, Tyson Fury's wins that go above Joe Joyce for me. The sort of names that he's got on there now, because he's had to do it the hard way. Dubois, yeah? Who wanted to fight Daniel Dubois at that time? Daniel Dubois was so hot, he was the favourite heading into that fight. He should come through Zhang, fingers crossed. Joe Parker, Takam, who we've just seen beat, you know, uh, Tony Yoka. Bermain Stavern, former world champion, a bit faded at that point, but still a great name to have. Started his career in a 10 round against Ian Lewis. And this is a guy who's doing it the hard way that we should get behind. Absolutely. Now, let's just come on to the rumours of this alleged heavyweight tournament in Saudi. I know Simon Jordan on Talks what mentioned it. Um, I don't know whether, I don't know how they want to schedule this, so there was not a mention of that. But the, the thing that everyone's saying is it won't all happen over one weekend where we have two fights and then they announce the final. But thoughts of an Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder, then a, a Fury Usyk, and then winner take all in months after, maybe April, the year after. What have you heard about that, and how sort of exciting is it that that is a potential route? But it's tough because obviously it's just you hear so much in in boxing, so much speculation, and it feels like right now that's that's kind of all it is. And I'm a bit bitten and shy by 
getting excited about stuff, getting excited about fights, and then the fights don't happen. And I think like boxing fans in general are. So I, I don't really want to give it too much credence just yet, give it too much heat, because uh, we've been so disappointed so often. So it's all just talk right now. Obviously, Anthony Joshua announced that he was going to be fighting next in December, which leads me to think that he isn't going to have a, and this is with no disrespect, because they were all talking about a Dillian White um, fight and then the winner of that fight going on for a big fight with, with a Wilder and with all the big boys. What do you think Anthony Joshua will do next? If he's obviously saying December, that means it must be one of the big hitters. Would you be disappointed if it was um, a lesser than it or, or, someone, or somebody else other than a Wilder? See, but you see what, what, what we're saying about talk like he's put that statement out right about the December thing and then quite quickly afterwards Big D quite quickly afterwards um, uh, Barry Hearn saying you know we may, may well see him in July may, may do a U-turn like, and also Eddie Hearn publicly on Twitter quickly dispelled it as well saying no decision made yet so I don't know. I don't know what to believe. Maybe he will just be out in July. Maybe he will just fight Dillian White or someone of a Jermaine Franklin ilk. Or maybe he will wait. You just don't know. But uh, it's a testament to, to Anthony Joshua's star power that him just putting out a little thing saying, oh, by the way, I might just fight in December, has got everyone just losing their minds. With his last performance against Jermaine Franklin, a lot of people are saying, yeah, good boxing. He showed he had an engine over 12, but a reluctancy to pull the trigger. If you were to put him in there now with a Joe Joyce who seems to be firing on all cylinders, what happens? It hasn't, it hasn't always been the case, right? The Anthony Joshua, for a long time in his career, would have clearly started as a favourite against Joe Joyce. Something's happened, that's now tweaked. Um, check Sky bet, Joe Joyce now actually begins as a slight favourite against Anthony Joshua. I think there is a feeling that this version of Anthony Joshua, who perhaps isn't pulling the trigger as freely as he once did, if you've got someone in there against Joe Joyce who's second-guessing themselves a little bit, perhaps not fully sure of themselves, Joe Joyce is the last man you want to be in the ring with because he will not stop punching you and, and he will drown you. What would happen if, if Joyce boxed Anthony Joshua? Look, I think it's pretty obvious. Uh, Frank, Frank said he could be... Um, Joshua and Franklin on the same night. Uh, that, that's that's great chat. Um, I, I'm I'm pretty confident that he would beat Anthony Joshua. However, this is this is where I'll, I'll, I'll give I'll give Joshua the credit. I think Josh uh, that Joe Joyce has a harder night against Joshua than he would against Usyk. I just think Joshua can punch a lot harder. And if he does land that shot, Joyce would know about it. He's, he's, Joshua is still one of the heaviest hitters in the heavyweight division. I think. Joe Joyce will feel a lot more comfortable walking down Usyk than what he would against Anthony Joshua. It's a pretty well-rounded, fair assessment from Queensbury Zone. I'm trying, I'm, trying, <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to just level it out a little bit. Look, I, I think all the things that I think, and I, I say them with my chest, but I, I understand a lot of people, especially Anthony Joshua fans, get very upset. Like, it's, it's crazy, right? I'm just I'm upsetting people every day just by picking one fighter over the other. It's a difference of opinion. I, I don't think you... I think you were disrespectful with it. Um, let's talk about a tweet that came out the other day. Um, I'd asked Gareth A. Davis about it. It had been reported. I think Sean Gibbons, Manny Pacquiao's uh, promoter, manager, advisor. I'm going to ask you about it. He put out, and he's put a lot of statements out over the past couple of months saying they'd agreed to fight with Conor Ben. Can I just get your reaction to that and your thoughts on it? I think the sigh and the look to the heavens sort of said it all, but thoughts? No, no one should be calling out Manny Pacquiao, right? He's 44 years old. Um, Honestly, I think it's disgraceful. That's, that's how I feel about it. Just leave him alone. He's 44 years old. He retired two years ago. He made his professional debut in 1995. You probably weren't even born in 1995, were you? Yeah, 92. Man. 92, okay. Well, fair play. You're doing all right. Doing all right. Um, I mean, but... you like a fine wine, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say so. But look, just my, my whole feeling on this is I don't like it. I feel like people around him should be deterring him from trying to come back for, for some money. If you're going to come back for money, I'm sure he'll get plenty of offers to do exhibition fights. You don't have to take on actual fighters. And you don't have to take on actual fighters like, like Conor Ben, who might, who might just lay him flat on the canvas. This version of Conor Ben, 26 years old, against Manny Pacquiao, 44 years old. I, I think it's... Um, the fighters shouldn't be thinking about it. I, I just don't like it. The whole thing's got a stink around it. It's in bad taste. Leave Manny Pacquiao alone. He's a legend of the sport. Uh, you can say, like, oh, yeah, but, but he wants to fight. We, we have to facilitate it because he wants to fight. In 10 years' time, he will still want to fight. He is a fighter through and through. 
Leave him alone. Fair enough. Dev Sani, look, I appreciate you talking to Boxing Social. You give everyone so much of your time all week, and we will catch up hopefully after the fight. I appreciate it. Okay, see you, uh, see you tomorrow.